Here in beautiful Alaska, some of the nation's best have spent the holidays battling it out, but now the championship game has arrived. First-year head coach Bill Guthridge has his team firing on all cylinders. Antoine Jameson inside, Vince Carter outside, and both of them have Ed Coder to thank for some great feeds here in this tournament. Purdue coach Gene Caney has seen his team roll into the final on the strength of its two super seniors. Chad Austin and Brad Miller are as good a duo as there is in the nation. Toss in a super sophomore class led by Gary McQuay, and Purdue hopes to stop the Tar Heel Express. And welcome everybody one more time to Anchorage, Alaska for the championship game of the 20th annual Great Alaska Shootout and what a dandy one this should be. Number five, Purdue. Number three, North Carolina. Hi everybody, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you inside noisy and sold out Sullivan Arena. They've come here to see two of the best teams in the country. North Carolina's been unstoppable in this tournament. What does Purdue do to slow them down? Well, certainly the keys for a Purdue win are to neutralize the backcourt, limit the easy opportunities inside, especially the alley-oop, and to get into that Carolina short bench. Now, Brad Miller and Brian Cardinal for Purdue are both physical players. They're going to have to keep their bodies on Antoine Jameson and um, Vince Carter as they roam the base. Line. And as far as the backcourt, Chad Austin and Alan Eldridge, those guys are going to have to go at Ed Cota, both in the pressure and on offense, to try to get him out of the game. Tough task for the Boilermakers. North Carolina has been sharp. Both teams are 5-0 and on the young season so far and looking for a championship. Purdue will need Chad Austin averaging 20 a game to step it up. Carolina's got a lot of weapons led by Vince Carter. We'll tip it off after this. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Dremel, tools for the imagination, and by the complete line of 1998 Lincoln automobiles. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. What a few days of basketball it's been up here in Alaska. And for these two guys, roommates 40 years ago at Kansas State, now Bill Guthridge and Gene Cady meet for the first time as opposing head coaches, wishing each other well for Gene Cady. Brian Cardinal hits the floor with abandoned scores, rebounds, takes charges. He's going to be a big key trying to stop some of the big bodies that North Carolina could throw out there. Ed Cota has had a fantastic tournament, hitting almost every shot. He's only turned the ball over once in two games. The floor leader for the Tar Heels. Six starters, Bill Guthridge feels, so he alternates them on an alphabetical basis. Anabola Okalaja does not start tonight's game, but he'll be in there probably within three minutes. That's what Bill Guthridge has been doing. He's taking over for Dean Smith as his team off to a 5-0 start. And what talent Dean Smith left. Gene Cady needs one win to become Purdue's all-time winningest coach. He would love to do it here over the number three team in the land. ACC Big Ten matchup, and in the 90s, the ACC winning twice as many times as the Big Ten has. And right now, as you look at the two teams, both have been impressive, but North Carolina looks sharper, has looked sharper the last couple of days than Purdue has. Gene Cady saying his team still has to iron out a few things. Bill Guthridge's team has looked perfect. Right now, we see North Carolina in a man-to-man, -man, as expected. Three guard offense for Purdue. Cardinal going to work on Jamison. The size mismatch is at the three spot. It is Carter for Carolina and Jerron Cornell for Purdue. Cornell giving up four inches. I like the way Purdue is going to their big men up top initially, make them the conduits of the offense. Loose ball comes free. Chad Austin from the corner. And another offensive rebound. Eldridge blocked by Jai, but Purdue's got it back again. Well, that's the Carolina advantage, having big people who are quick on their feet with excellent timing inside, limiting field goal opportunities. Cardinal, long two-pointer, and Purdue finally hits one to take an early lead. And going back to the earlier point, as Purdue sets up in some full-court pressure, you bring your big man up because people have to honor them. They're good shooters and good passers. Here's a good shooter, Shaman Williams. Short on the three, got his own rebound back through the hands of Jamison. When Purdue brings Cardinal and Miller up top, as I mentioned, they're good passers, they're good shooters. You have to honor them. That brings the big guys from Carolina out onto the floor, opens up the middle, and it'll be a good opportunity for Austin and probably Eldridge to kind of post up the guards. 
Eldridge baseline to look for Miller. He'll take it over Jive. Four nothing Boilermakers. Maktar Jai not accustomed to playing people out on the floor. You can expect to see Brad Miller out there an awful lot tonight. All kinds of pressure from Purdue. And Carolina may just have gotten away with a couple of things, perhaps a walk, and then perhaps whose ball it should be on the out of bounds. Well, we talk about pressure and its impact, and certainly the immediate impact of turnovers, but again, continuing to wear a team down both mentally and physically, and if Purdue is successful, they'll keep it up. With everybody back from last year, Gene Cady stepping up the intensity and trying to press 40 minutes baseline to baseline. Carter's been deadly from outside in this tournament, not close here, and Purdue with a four-point lead on the run. Cornell pulls up for a three. And another offensive rebound for a guard. Miller for three. Seven nothing Purdue. Well, when you said they didn't look sharp last night, I'm sure they got the message from Gene Cady. Purdue has come out razor sharp offensively. Coda right to the basket. Jameson in there. Now Jameson inside and Carolina finally on the board two and a half minutes in. Great look by Vince Carter. He had an open jump shot but unselfishly looked in and got a better one for Jameson. Miller feeling it from outside doesn't get the roll. Cardinal the offensive rebound. Miller back in there to do some work on the glass. Purdue all over the glass right now. And here comes Okalaja. First substitution coming early for the Tar Heels. Shamada Williams is going to come out and now a size advantage if you want to call it that for Carolina is even stronger and Okalaja does an awful lot of things particularly on the defensive side going to try and get involved on the offensive side but miss the acrobatic alley-oop well we talked about at the beginning of the telecast Purdue would have to limit those opportunities for the alley-oop the impact of the alley-oop as we see Coda with a clear vision no one with a body on Okalaja, he just misses it. But the impact of the alley-oop is not only two points, but it also takes the confidence of the opposing team who's given up that type of situation. And it builds up the confidence of Carolina. Cardinal misses a three-pointer. Purdue taking a lot of outside shots early. They do lead by five. See, when you get easy baskets like the alley-oop and the short one-footers, it makes it so much easier for the jump shooters later on because you shot a high percentage. Those jump shots fall a lot easier. There's Jameson who's been working on that mid-range jumper. He misses. Okalaja missed the follow. And a foul on Carolina is going to set it the other way. Well, that's uncharacteristic of Okalaja. Misses an alley-oop and misses a, misses a gimme underneath. Carolina has been a razor sharp as a team this year. They're shooting 60%. They're just one for seven here so far tonight as Gene Cady goes to his bench for the first time. Mike Robinson is coming in for Jerron Cornell and also into the game Gary McQuay for the Boilermakers. So Cady countering Guthridge's move. Purdue has gotten bigger. Look at the numbers for Carolina 60% as a team through five games this season. But they haven't faced a team like Purdue who has a lot of offensive capability not only in the front line but in the backcourt. Foul on Jai and I know you think it's important for Miller, McQuay and Cardinal to go right at those Carolina big men. Absolutely and again having the ability to step out on the floor and put it on the floor gives them a decisive advantage. That is the second foul on Jai. And Bill Guthridge only really comfortable with his top six. Now Jamison got poked in the eye. He's all right. Purdue misses another shot. Tar Heels on the run. Dakota to the foul line. Tries to get it by Miller. Jamada Williams getting set to check in. Jai with two fouls. Nice look for Okalaja. He can hit that three. Trying to draw the foul. Didn't get the call. Purdue the other way. Purdue looking to run in transition. A nice job by Jai and Coda to get back. Chad Austin off the screen. Eldridge, the left-hander for three. Purdue, had they been hitting, they could have a really big lead at this point in time. They've had some good looks that haven't gone down. They have a little bit of impatience, though. That time, Eldridge had better shots in his arsenal. Steal for Eldridge. Coda's going to let him go. Like that one. 
left-hander went around the basket and dunked with his right. It's 9-2 Boilermakers. Again, we talk about the pressure. Sometimes teams relax once they beat that first wave. But Purdue ever vigilant playing the passing lane. They are forcing better than 23 turnovers a game this season. Okalaja, tough one, no. Rebound Austin. And again, they're running. Robinson off for McQuay. Offensive foul. No basket. McQuay didn't like it, neither did Katie. But they've got to be pretty happy with the way they started, leading the Tar Heels by seven. The Purdue Boilermakers off to a good start, especially on the defensive end. They've already got a seven-point lead on Carolina left. But we talked about utilizing the big people for Purdue as conduits. You see Brad Miller on the back pick, moving without the ball. They get the ball outside, and again, on a straight feed to him outside, putting it on the floor, forcing Maktar Jai to come out and play him. Miller's a great passer and a great shooter. Jai's got to honor him. Brad Miller off to a good start. The three-pointer for him, just the fifth of his career at Purdue. But he looked pretty comfortable taking it. Took another one next time down the floor. Well, that plants a mental seed in the mind of Maktar Jai. He can't just sit in the middle of the lane patrolling and looking to block shots. Jai still in the game with the two fouls. Shamada Williams in for Vince Carter for the Tar Heels. There's Maktar in a high percentage shot he has been pretty good offensively in this tournament a nice interior passing there just shows you how talented the Jamesons and the Carters are with their ability to move the ball Mike Robinson left all alone and missed a 12 footer Cardinal into the game for Miller for the Boilermakers Tony Mayfield also into the game for Purdue a junior college player point guard here's Austin Robinson back out Chad Austin left open for three he knew it was short right away but another offensive rebound for the Boilermakers you didn't figure they would have this much of an advantage and offensive goaltending on the play well, McQuay got up there pretty high good timing of the ball seemed to just lay on the rim he really couldn't help himself Austin coming out now and Eldridge back in also Miller back in for McQuay and Robinson out. A lot of changes for Purdue. Brendan Haywood has come into the game for North Carolina for the first time, a seven-foot freshman. We see the impact of Brad Miller's ability to bring Maktar Jai outside. Jai's now forced to sit. Carolina has to go into their bench probably a little earlier than they'd like by bringing in Brendan Haywood. And Haywood may not be accustomed at all to having to leave the basket either. Coda to the basket. And they'll tie it up. Carolina is going to keep it. Well, that was just excellent play, beginning with Coda splitting the defense. You take a look at Brad Miller, though, guarding the lane, not only blocking the shot, but having the ability to contest Anton Jameson and tie him up. And Good, so re Good reaction by Brad Miller on that play. And so far, the big men of Purdue, Miller and Cardinal, have been foul-free. A big difference for Bill Guthridge's team, 60% on the season coming in. And tonight, just two for 12, running into that high-octane pressure that Gene Cady likes to employ. And obviously, from a personnel standpoint, Purdue, the toughest opponent for Carolina this season. Carter back in. Coated to the bench. Sticky defense played by Purdue. Not an awful lot of daylight for Carolina shooters. Three-pointer short. Jamison with a great rebound over Cardinal and draws the foul. Antoine Jamison showing how he can get up once and then twice quicker than anybody else in college basketball. And Brian Cardinal's got to be careful kicking the ball away. He's frustrated. Good block out by Brad Miller. You see Cardinal had his body between Jamison and the basket, but he didn't do enough to move him off the spot. And Jamison with that quick leaping ability, long arms, was able to reach over Cardinal and avoid the foul. Quite a night that Jamison had in the semifinal last night against Seton Hall. Some gaudy numbers for the top six of the Tar Heels in this tournament. The foul on Miller, by the way, his first team third.
Jameson, the Tar Heel, credited with saying it was a shock when Dean Smith announced his retirement. It was like losing our father, but then we got our uncle and Bill Guthridge. All the players so familiar with Guthridge from his years with Dean Smith. And as far as Guthridge goes, he told us a couple of days ago he's trying to have fun, but life one seat over is a little bit different. Well, certainly you have to make all the decisions rather than defer to someone else. And the anonymity that Bill loves so much, well, you can forget about that now, being at the helm of one of the premier programs in college basketball. Carolina crawling back into it. They've scored the last four points. Nine, six, Purdue in a low-scoring first quarter. Good battle underneath Okolodge and Brian Cardinal jockeying for position. Who said these guys are physical. Miller covered by Haywood. Here comes Eldridge off the screen. Now Miller's going to try another three-pointer. This is not something we have seen from Brad Miller in the first couple of games of this tournament, but he's taken three and hit one. As we've reached a timeout, 2.38 to play. First quarter, Purdue by three. Uh, and as everybody knows, look, we play a lot more games every year than they used to then, so it took him a little longer to do it. But you know, all you got to do is uh, coach 20 years and win 20 games a year, and it happens. So it's not any big deal. I just want to have our team be great by March. That's my goal. Well, a little easier said than done to win 20 games every year for 20 years, but Gene Cady is set to pass Ward Lambert, who coached at Purdue from 1918 to 1946 and coached John Wooden. That was the meaning for the Coach Wooden reference by Cady. Another steal. Miller. Is he going to take it to the basket? Missed it, and Jamison the rebound. Well, Brad Miller missed it because of great hustle by Okalaja. Shamad Williams missing a three at the other end, kept alive by Jai. It's going to belong to Carolina. Good hustle by Jai down in the corner. Cardinal does not like the call. Well, Brian Cardinal doesn't like to be out hustled on any front. And you take a look here. A nice job by Shimon Williams. Presence of mind, they knock it off of Cardinal. A good hustle by both teams. Good hustle by Carolina to get back and bother Miller on the layup. Purdue missing a lot of shots. They are four for 18 right now. Otherwise, they could have a very sizable lead. But what, what's happening with Purdue right now is getting back on offense. Aside from the missed layup or two, they're really more comfortable taking a jump shot as opposed to exploring inside. A little bit earlier, I talked about Allen Eldridge taking a three and settling for that rather than exploring more and Purdue the whole team right now seems to be doing that. Here's Steele now it's loose on the floor the Boilermakers have it quick hands. That's that pressure we talked about go at the Carolina guards. Miller going right to the basket and the foul is going to go on Maktar Jai and that should be his third. We talked about one of the keys with a go at the Carolina guards, Coda all Williams, both in the pressure, full court and half court, and Purdue did it just then. Now they got into their transition right away, entry pass inside, something they hadn't been doing most of this game. And with only six experienced players, Jai now comes out, Coda comes back in, but Bill Guthridge is going to have to use his reserves, probably Brendan Haywood, more than he would like. Well, another key we talked about was getting into the short Carolina bench. Brendan Haywood has great potential as a seven-foot freshman, but he's still a little bit raw, still not accustomed to the system. It's going to be a major test for him. We saw those numbers on Brad Miller, the steals and the blocks. He also passes very well. He may not have as much of an inside a game as some other centers his size, but he's as versatile as any big man in the country. Cardinal hustles, but Williams has the loose ball. Four-point lead, Purdue. Well, right now, Carolina's content with playing Okolaja at one of the big spots, as well as Jamison. Okolaja, an excellent defender in the post as well as outside, and will create problems with his perimeter game. Okolaja taking Cardinal baseline. Now looks off for Jamison, and a nice touch off the glass. Exactly what I mean. Okolaja very handy with the ball. Nice drive, penetrate, drew to defense, and found his man. Cornell looks inside, and it's still Purdue's. Okolaja got a hand in the way. And the other side of it is Okolaja with that post defense inside right here. Cardinal working hard for position, and Okolaja fights to get in front at the last moment to deflect that pass. In the first two games, Carolina, as Cornell slashes to the basket, goaltending on to Carter. 
Carolina was so much bigger than UCLA in round one because of the suspensions and so much bigger than Seton Hall last night that their big men haven't really been forced to play a ton of post defense. But Purdue matches up size-wise pretty well. Oh, they absolutely do, and they're a physical bunch of guys, too. Not just big, but they'll lay a body on you. Jameson lost the handle now. An elbow by Cardinal inadvertently decked Okolaja. And now Cardinal over to see how Okolaja is doing and is pushed away by Carter and Jameson. Cardinal tried to explain to Carter that he didn't mean it, but tempers are short. Well, I think that's a combination of Carolina's circle of wagons mentality, trying to protect their player, not recognizing that Cardinal was there trying to essentially find out how he was doing. I mean, that, that was inadvertent, but that was a pretty hard foul. Cardinal pleading his case to the official. We see Okolaja moving off. At game speed, it didn't look as bad as it did on that replay. It looked pretty bad on that replay. We take a look here. Cardinal getting the ball. And, you know, it's a habit that a lot of big men have, not to excuse the fact that he threw an elbow, but a habit that big men have when they bring the ball up to protect it, the elbow spread. You know, Carolina players have done it. Players in memoriam. Time in memoriam have done it. So now two of Carolina's top six on the bench. Jai with foul trouble and Okalaja with a bloody nose. Brendan Haywood is going to check back in. And rightly it was called a foul. Couch Potatoes Alex Buckles and Ricky Boston. Please report to the Blue Doors. Couch Potatoes Alex. 111 to play in the quarter. Purdue leading by four here in the championship game of the Great Alaska Shootout. Carolina trying to become the first three-time winner of this event. Purdue a former champion as well as everyone here is with the exception of the host school, Alaska Anchorage, who lost their third consecutive game today. And for the first time in 13 years, Alaska Anchorage fails to win a single game at its own tournament. Trying to shake off the effects of the elbow and get back in there as soon as he can. A lot at stake here in the early going. Well, Gene, I'm not sure what the argument could be except that you know, they're playing it physically on both ends. He might have been arguing that it was inadvertent, and it certainly wasn't swung with any intent. At least any intent to create bodily right. injury. So Okalanja on the bench alongside Jai. Haywood back into the game. Miller, Cardinal, Austin, Eldridge, and Cornell, the starting five, back in there for the Boilermakers. And the fact that it's an underneath out of bounds play, the official didn't think it was done intentionally as well. Otherwise, it would have been free throws. Vince Carter has been very quiet so far tonight for North Carolina after doing just about anything he wanted to do in the first two games scoring, rebounding, blocking shots, steals. Right now, Carter's got a much smaller Chad Austin on him, but he's still not looking to venture down low. Shaman with a tough one, will not roll in. Haywood underneath, and they'll tie it up again between the two big men. This time, it'll go over to Purdue. Good job by Brendan Haywood moving his feet, getting an offensive rebound position. But instead of grabbing the ball, he attempted to tip it, and that's essentially what gave Brad Miller the opportunity to tie him up. Final minute of the first quarter, Purdue by four. Eldridge. Underneath, rebound Jamison. Purdue's got ice cold since the first few minutes of this game. Again, it's because of the jump shooting as opposed to exploring down low. Shot clock turned off, 20 seconds to play in the quarter. Carolina running its passing game. What they hope to do, again, is to catch the defense out of position, look for back doors but they certainly don't intend to fumble it. Now the final shot to the Boilermakers. Chad Austin is going to take it. And the quarter will come to a close on that note. Neither team shooting well at all. High pressure defense by Purdue, a bloody nose for Okalaja, and a lot of intensity on the floor here in the championship game. My little brother's latest dilemma. Fancy sports car, rugged truck. Hello, Mr. Plaid shirt. Head over to Ben Mine at GM Mega Store. Because right. Kentucky beating Purdue a year ago. From Alaska, but North Carolina fans nonetheless. Purdue's got a bunch of fans here as well. They've got a whole 
section up in the upper deck. And for those fans, they've been able to play their game defensive workmanlike. This is not a rock concert where everybody gets their licks. That's how Carolina likes to play. Shamada Williams to the basket, cutting the lead to two. Purdue quickly up the floor. Okalaja back into the game for Carolina. You know, both of these teams with gaudy game scoring averages certainly haven't been accustomed to playing at this particular pace. But again, right now it favors Purdue because they're the guys who have to work to get their shots much more so than Carolina. Lob inside for Miller, and he is fouled. Antoine Jameson does not like it. That time, a great opportunity Purdue took in moving the ball to get it inside. At the other end, their pressure is doing exactly what Gene Cady hoped it would do. And again, it's wearing Carolina down mentally. You know, you're going to have the occasional fumble, the occasional pass that's thrown away, which create opportunities for Purdue to get some easy baskets. Miller missing the first. Jai on the bench with his three fouls. Probably won't see him the rest of the half. Gene Cady saying he expects regular double doubles from Brad Miller this year. Senior season for both Miller and Austin. Purdue, the preseason favorites in the Big Ten. Carolina pushing it up the floor, trailing by three. Jamison. And it's going to go against the Tar Heels. That was an example of Antoine Jamison doing something that right now he's not accustomed to doing. Putting it on the floor, driving, trying to make the play. You see he gets up and good shape but he takes off a little awkwardly two dribbles not really help not really used to putting it on the floor and that is number two on Jameson he comes out Chad Austin sitting down he is playing with a broken nose it has that mask on that to protect it and obviously took a bit of a shot from Jameson when he took the charge so Jameson and Austin are both coming out Brad Frederick, a 6'5 junior, a walk-on into the game for Carolina, seeing his first action. He's number eight in that short rotation. Steal by Tar Heels, numbers. Coda with Shimon Williams. Pulls up and buries it. Carolina back within one. That time, Carolina changed up the defense, went to a zone, started to trap in the corner, still in the 2-3 zone with Frederick in the game. Carolina forced to go to that short bench earlier than they'd like to. High post Miller, and he gets the bounce. And with Frederick out there not being able to match up very well, they had to go to the 2-3 zone. Bill Guthridge knows he's going to need more depth than he's got right now once he gets into the ACC part of the schedule. It'll be interesting to see how Purdue plays Frederick if they just leave him and try to help, which McQuay did, but came a little too late. One point a game once again. Pace picking up a little bit here in the second quarter after an extremely low scoring first 10 minutes. Both of these teams very high scoring so far this year. Purdue up at 95 and Carolina 89. Again Miller looks for the open man. Cornell in the corner. Miller's a very good passing center. And you got to look for Chad Austin to try to get back in the ball game, particularly against his zone, because he's probably the best outside shooter for Purdue. McQuay had a gimme and lost the handle. And now Austin does come back in, apparently okay. Cornell to the bench. Against Carolina, it's tough when you come down in a half-court set and you're not able to get a shot up. You know, those are wasted opportunities that Purdue might regret. Frederick wants Carter inside, stolen by the Boilermakers. They're trying to get Carter involved. He has not scored yet in this game. Austin got it back. Now Miller with good position, got Carter in the air, two and a foul. Excellent job of patience, waiting for Brad Miller to make himself available before feeding him. Take a look again. Good ball movement. McQuay waited for, for Miller to make himself available. Miller was behind Carter initially. Miller already with 11 points has a little extra incentive to play well up here. His sister, who lives here and played basketball for the University of Alaska Anchorage, is in attendance. And Miller hasn't seen her in about a year until this tournament, but getting a chance to play and play well in front of her tonight. 
He's got 12 of Purdue's 18. Antoine Jameson getting set to come back in for Carolina. He's got two fouls. Five-second call on Ed Cota. Again, good defensive pressure by Purdue. Ed Cota was pretty much left out to dry by his offensive teammates who really had no offensive movement whatsoever. No one attempted to free themselves to be an outlet pass for Cota. He was forced to continue to pat the rock. And look at how many turnovers the Tar Heels have committed already. Ten in just over 13 minutes of play. Now Purdue just about turns it over. Mike Robinson getting back. One of the things that you have to do against the traps, coming to meet the ball, and Robinson did that. That's what enabled him to get the advantage to receive. McQuay traveled as he was trying to go to work on Jamison. Well, that's the plan. The Purdue big men are trying to step out on the floor, pull the Carolina big guys out from the middle, and then utilize their quickness. McQuay, not really a great ball handler on the wing. Is it risky at all to have Jamison in there with his two fouls? Well, unfortunately, it's a greater risk not to have him in there uh -huh. at this point in time. <laughs> it's shot by the Tar Heels. Austin back the other way in a hurry. Antoine Jamison is also a savvy player. He knows how to play with two fouls. Mayfield from the wing. Robinson battling Coda underneath, and Carter's got it. Purdue has just forced Carolina to look like a completely different team than they did the last two nights. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's happened. Purdue, as we see Jameson with the easy layup, Purdue has taken away the alley-oops, the ones, as I said, that give you a mental boost if you're on offense for Carolina. You get a couple of those, it makes the jump shots fall easier. Purdue's taken that away, and it's forced Carolina to work for their shots. Boilermakers by two, and another turnover. Mayfield thought it was off Shamada Williams, but it goes over to the Tar Heels, who have yet to lead, but are back within two. More Carolina fans here in Anchorage. Their team down by two, and one of the big reasons, high-flying Vince Carter, he's been grounded tonight. Well, he certainly has, and one of the reasons is Purdue is paying an awful lot of attention to him. He's been the recipient in past games of some high-flying alley-oops, but the way to prevent that is to keep sight of him, keep him in your vision, and also you see the double team with Chad Austin coming from the weak side. That's what he did last night against Seton Hall. He has been held scoreless so far tonight. And on the other side, Chad Austin has yet to score for the Boilermakers. It's a low-scoring game, just 18-16, five and a half to play first half. Maktar Jai on the bench with three fouls for Carolina. Antoine Jameson in the game with two fouls. Nobody in trouble for Purdue. Eldridge doing a nice job of making Coda work. Okalaja pulls up. That's a tough one. Rebound to Miller. Looks for the outlet. Settles for Eldridge. Carolina back in the man to man as they're back at full strength with their top six. Great play by Carter on an equally nice cut to the basket by Austin. At least five of their top six. <laughs> Well, the Carolina folks maintain that Vince Carter's becoming one of the best defensive players they have. And Chad Austin thought he had a layup, and then Carter came to shadow him all the way. Great leaping ability, great timing. Vince Carter's a great defender because he wants to be. Underneath, Antoine Jameson has tied the game. He already has 10. So dangerous in around the basket. But you give Carolina a lot of credit. They haven't tried to make it all happen in the quarter. They've worked, and they've worked, and they've inched away. Played good defense as well. Still Purdue's Brad Miller with another rebound on the Robinson miss. From outside, nobody doing anything. The only three-pointer of the game belongs to Brad Miller, of all people. Well, primarily because both teams are doing a great job of getting up into the three-point shooter's face for the most part. Miller being hounded by Shimada Williams. Now they switch, so Okalaja's on. 
You see where Robinson receives three or four steps off the three-point line, much further than they'd like. Cardinal underneath, and he got it. Again, on the feed from Miller. Brad Miller helping this team tonight in a variety of ways. Excellent high-low play with two post players. Good look inside from Carter to Okalaja. Missed it, though, and another rebound for Miller. Okalaja's missed several gimmies underneath. I don't know if he's rushing it a little bit too anxious. Excellent move, but poor finish. He is 0 for 7 from the floor. Now Austin guarded by Williams. Cardinal, he knows Jamison's got two fouls. Not much Jamison can do there. And you saw Brian Cardinal as he took off. He kind of jumped into Jamison. Jamison had to beg off, not wanting to draw that foul. See if Purdue continues to try and exploit that the rest of this half. Do staying in that man-to-man. -man. It's worked for them so well. Again, Eldridge not giving any breathing room to Ed Cota, making him work at every turn. Great look to Okolaja. Miller got in his way, and Okolaja missed another one. That time he was intimidated. He saw Miller, took his eye off the rim. Sometimes you just have to get it blocked. Now Jamison guarding Miller. Miller looks for Eldridge, who went flying as he missed the shot. The Purdue fans not very happy with that turn of events. Okalaja trying to heat up. All the Tar Heels are cold right now. They trail by four. Purdue has regained the lead on Carolina and thanks to Brad Miller scoring, rebounding, and now we see some passing as well. Well, certainly when you have two competent big men, one who can shoot well from the outside, the high-low situation, one big man up top, another one down on the block, is something that's pretty much a lost art in college basketball. Brad Miller, because he's able to shoot so well outside, he makes that happen, and certainly his passing ability makes things happen. A very good night for both of the big men. Miller getting more involved. Jamison does have 10 points. He's the offensive leader for Carolina, but defensively, Jamison has had to play very differently since picking up his second foul, and now with 248 to play in the half, we see a sub from Bill Guthridge, although it's not Jamison coming out. Brendan Haywood has come back into the game for Ed Cota and a very big lineup for Carolina. It also means that they're a little bit slower. You're going to have some guys who are laying around the block a little bit, although Jamison's still quick around that block area. Williams whips it inside for Jamison. Tough pass. Out of bounds to Purdue. Another turnover. And that was created by Brad Miller's quick hands. He deflected it off of Jamison's hands. He tried to recover. Again, we're going to see Brad Miller try to draw Brendan Haywood outside. Haywood definitely can't guard Miller on the outside. He's going to have to give up a lot of room. That opens up the middle for a possible high-low situation with McQuay. There's Miller outside. And a foul is going to go on Shamad Williams of the Tar Heels. That'll be the seventh for Carolina. Watch ABC for the final nine holes, the conclusion of the Skins game from La Quinta, California. Four of America's top players are there, including Tiger Woods. Tom Lehman, though, is the big winner today with 130,000. Tiger getting by. Marco Mira and David Duval shut out. Marco Mira with 20,000. There's nearly $400,000 still to be won on the final nine holes. Is it too late for us to get in on it? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't matter for me. <laughs> you must me, play well. Me neither. But at least give me a shot. <laughs> it's like winning the lottery, you know. At halftime here tonight, a fan who's been chosen in advance is going to have a chance to win a million dollars if he can sink two of three half-court shots. I noticed you were stuffing the ballot box on uh -huh. that one while you were practicing our shooting. <laughs> if only I could get it that far. <laughs> Six-point lead now for Purdue. Late stages of the first half. And more pressure. Yeah, Brendan Haywood is certainly a pressure release. He's big enough to be able to throw over the pressure. Carter wanted Jamison. Now Okalaja left open for three. Big shot for the Tar Heels. One of the few times the Tar Heels shooter has been left open for that long. Okalaja sized up the shot, was able to get it underneath. Good rotation and dropped it. And he finally hits one after missing his first eight. Now Miller in good position. Got Haywood in the air and finishes. 
Brad Miller much quicker than Brendan Haywood. Look for Purdue to try to exploit that matchup. 14 for Miller. A little lob, Jamison inside. Got up in a hurry, and Jamison just about keeping pace with Miller. Jamison's got 12. And now Gene Cady wants a 30-second timeout. 30 Coming up at halftime, we're going to join the ESPN News Network. Michael Kim and Dave Revson are going to update us on Arizona. They're in action again. Highlights from the Knicks and the Suns and Georgia Tech facing Louisville. Stay tuned for the highlights of that one. Just a minute, 19 seconds away. Dan, you were talking about getting it up in a hurry. Antoine Jameson has probably got the quickest leap in college basketball. And it's very difficult. It's almost as though he catches and goes up all in one motion. It's difficult to guard that. He's shooting just about 70% from the floor. A lot of them in close like that. He's added the jump shot that he's comfortable with. He's, he's a weapon, to say the least. All he's got to do is work on putting it on the floor, picking it up, and putting it on the floor and finishing. But uh, he gets that done. He's got the complete game going. Still Carolina trails despite the efforts of Jameson. One more look at his last bucket. Watch the receive and hits the floor and back up before the defense can really get set. Doing a 180 while he was doing it too to face the basket. Five for seven from the floor. 12 points, seven rebounds already. And good thing for Carolina that ha he's had a good night because Vince Carter is still scoreless. Well, the key to Antoine Jameson's game aside from the quick uh, approach to the basket is his footwork. He gets himself in position to go to the basket. You talked about the 180. That's all footwork. He had his feet, the drop step, got his head and shoulders past the defender. He sits now for the final minute and 20 seconds to avoid picking up his third foul. Frederick back in the game and Carolina back in the 2-3 zone. Eldridge with a three-pointer and a six-point lead for Purdue. Allen Eldridge looking to make Carolina pay for going into that zone. They've got some shooters out there. Coda into traffic, lays it in. Ed Coda continuing to have a dynamite tournament. Ed Coda, zone breaker extraordinaire, but look for him. Cardinal got it. Look for Coda. by Brian Cardinal. Look for Coda again to try to take this thing over. Control the ball, find people. Here's another steal. Allen Eldridge, second time tonight. Point guard play, theoretically one of the weaknesses of the Boilermakers, but not tonight. Eldridge has nine. Shamada Williams short with it. Austin got the timeout called. It will be a 30-second timeout. We take a look here. Austin calls the timeout before he breaks the plane, it appears, and the officials gave it to him. There's some question as to whether that would be allowed this year or not, but I'm not really a proponent of calling the timeouts except in crucial situations. Getting the last shot is a crucial situation with nine seconds left. That's the senior leadership right there, cognizant of the time and the score situation. And already with an eight-point lead in what has to be considered a bit of a surprise here against Carolina, they can pad that lead a little bit. I thought for sure that Carolina would try to keep the ball in Ed Coda's hands. He's much better at creating for Carolina than anybody they have on the floor right now, but they've been content to try to move the ball around. Final shot of the half to the Boilermakers. Austin's going to try and do it himself. He'll have to throw up a prayer from the corner. Wouldn't have counted had it gone, but Purdue smothering Carolina, leading 33-25 at halftime of the championship game in the great Alaska shootout. Purdue by eight right now. Stay tuned at halftime. We're going to join the ESPN News Network next. ESPN's presentation of NCAA. Welcome back, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you at Anchorage for the second half now of the championship game of the 20th annual Great Alaska Shootout. Purdue leading by eight at the half, and in recent years when they have led at the half, they've gone on to win 58 of the last 59 times they've led at the half. 
they've won. But you know at some point, Lynn, there's going to be a Carolina charge, and Vince Carter will be involved. Just 37% for the Tar Heels in the first half. Came into the game shooting 60% on the season, and turnovers a dozen. Well, certainly points off turnovers greatly working to the favor of Purdue. And the inside points, surprisingly, Carolina has been limited, and Purdue has taken some advantage, something that they normally get anyway. Carolina had better than 70 points in the paint against Seton Hall last night, but nowhere near that success against a bigger and deeper Purdue team here. Miller going right to work, and he drops it in. Brad Miller now with 16. And Mokhtar Jai playing a little tentatively defensively, obviously because of the foul problems that he's had. He had three quick ones, played only seven minutes in the first half. As was the case at the beginning of the game, Okolaja starts the second half on the bench. Carter with a tough catch. Now wide open, Shimon Williams. Jamison the follow. Got it again. Can't say enough, not only about his quick step to the basket but also his hands excellent grab in a crowd already 14 points and nine rebounds for Antoine Jameson Miller nice look out for Cardinal Eldridge goes right by Carter tough shot on the baseline way off but Miller there to put it back in and that time Jai pointing towards Eldridge who looked like he was going to penetrate just left Brad Miller 10-point lead, Purdue, 18 for Miller. Coda left hand. And Miller and Cornell battling one another, knocked it out of bounds. Take a look at Purdue's pressure, the deflections, the steals. As we mentioned, they result in the points off turnovers after you force it. You know, that's something that wears on a team, and as time goes on, Carolina with that short bench you're gonna see them kind of tire even mentally and make some errors that they normally wouldn't Shimon Williams misses another three and now Jai is fouled by Miller it'll be Miller's second they could use Shimon Williams heating up from the outside well the sleeping giant at this point obviously not intentionally but because of fouls may have awakened Jai may decide that you know despite the fouls that I have I'm gonna have to go and have some impact for the time that I'm involved He's had a couple of good games here with 12 points, a career high in one of them. Just two tonight because he was hardly on the floor in the first half. Okolaja will be in the game before long. Bloody nose back in the first half when he took an elbow from Brian Cardinal. Back down to an eight-point lead for Purdue. No point in this game have the Tar Heels led. Eldridge, screened by Cardinal. Eldridge, the three. This is the biggest lead of the night for Purdue. Again, Purdue staying with the pressure, knowing how it wears the team down. Carolina breaking it as well as they have all night. Coda on the finish. The best way to get him out of the pressure is to convert on the other end with easy opportunities. Cardinal with good position on Jamison. Left it short. Rebound Jai. Cardinal did a great job to plant himself three feet for the basket but couldn't hit the turnaround. Had to fade away. Jai in full extension is very difficult to shoot over even if you are 6'9". Williams with a nice move. Left hand. We talked about at the beginning of the telecast, Purdue would also have to neutralize the Carolina guards, but it's the Carolina guards that are pretty much keeping Carolina in this basketball game. Cornell launches. Miller tips it. Cornell and back to Miller again. Another second opportunity. Chad Austin. And Miller, another rebound underneath, and two more points. Brad Miller's got 20. Great recognition by the big man. Recognized that Austin was going to take the shot, and rather than standing around, went right to the weak side board. Brad Miller stepping up his game. Shamad Williams finally hits a three-pointer. And finally gets an open look in the half-court set. Cardinal and Austin quickly down the floor at the other end to make Carolina pay. And that's got to be frustrating. You come down, you make a good play offensively, and right away, two quick passes, the other team gets a layup. 
You know, if Carolina's going to shave this deficit, they're going to have to do it on the defensive end. Multiple substitutions coming for both teams. Shaman Williams again in traffic, and now Shaman is heating up. Williams with 11. Still waiting for Vince Carter to get going. Cardinal with a tough turnaround. Both teams finding some offense now. Purdue by eight. Purdue calls off the full court pressure. Again, we said a couple of easy layups will get that out of the way. And going back into their half court man to man. Outside jumper again by Williams. Rebound Eldridge. Not a good shot by Shimon Williams. Three steps off the three point line. And not a good pass by Allen Eldridge. Purdue will turn it over. Both teams, though, picking up the pace. Plenty of changes when we return. Purdue leads by eight. Well, we hate to sound like a broken record, Lynn, but Brad Miller's getting it done in all facets of the game right now for well, Purdue. Well, certainly, if there's one way to build confidence in your jump shooters, that's to be able to put it back. Miller, textbook offensive rebound. He gives the ball up, and he doesn't stand there and wait. He immediately goes to the weak side board where he was rewarded. Huge night for Brad Miller, already with 20 points, and Purdue doing a great job on the glass. And second chance points, they're more than doubling Carolina, which doesn't happen to the Tar Heels very often at all. Well, that's the name of the game. To gain as many second chance opportunities as you can. Good teams, when you play them, you can't afford to give them the second chance. Near turnover there. Shimada Williams taking the shot every time down the floor. Here's a second chance as Okalaja comes up with the rebound. He and Haywood have both returned for the Tar Heels. Robinson, Mayfield, and McQuay have come in for Purdue. Now the lob for Haywood inside. Miller with two fouls, just stands him up, and Haywood drops it in. Good hands, good eyesight by Haywood that time. The young freshman is starting to get the hang of it. Seven foot, 265. Turnover. Those are the kind that hurt. An easy entry pass that was muffed. Bad pass inside by Robinson. Both teams shooting much better here in the second half. Coda flying in there. He likes that little runner. Well, he's getting an awful lot of room. He pretty much has his way out on the floor getting around his man, and none of the help is stepping up. They're all staying at home, anticipating a dish. Chad Austin, still waiting for him to score for Purdue as well. Came in averaging nearly 20 a game. Miller's got 20 already. Now McQuay from 15. And to the glass goes Okalaja. Trapp gets out of it. Carolina's got a chance to cut into it a little more. Jamison! There on the other end by Carolina, taking advantage of a straight entry pass with a defender on his back. Antoine Jameson doing what he does so well. He's got 16, and Carolina's back within two. Miller hits the cutter, lost the pass. Okalaja back the other way. Carolina can tie, maybe take the lead on this possession. They haven't led in this game. Talk about the straight entry passes inside. McQuay on Jamison's back. That's a no-no. If Jamison has you locked on the block, you might as well wave the red flag in his face because he's going to wind up taking you. What a huge night for him. He's near a double-double already. Vince Carter back in for the Tar Heels. Cornell's come back in along with Cardinal for Purdue. Brad Miller's gone to the bench. Jamison will pull up and tie the game. 18 for Jamison. An 8-0 run for Carolina. They have yet to lead in this game. Now it's Purdue who needs a spark. Still belongs to the Boilermakers with 14 to shoot. Momentum swinging 
the way of the Tar Heels. They're up off their bench in a hurry here. Antoine Jameson doing it all for North Carolina tonight. Antoine Jameson carrying the load for the Tar Heels, hitting a shot to tie that last year he might not even take. Well, certainly the great ones find a way to beat you. We talk about Antoine Jameson on the blocks, but here he gets an opportunity to put it on the floor. One dribble squares up nicely. And as you mentioned, this is something he's worked on over the summer, and it's been talked about. Nice touch, great rotation. And this is a guy showing his player of the year package right now. Carolina tied with Purdue at 46. Late stages in the third quarter. Brad Miller on the bench has 20 for the Boilermakers. Jamison has 18 for North Carolina. And you can bet Brad Miller won't go on the bench long. Chad Austin on the bench as well for Purdue. Cornell threw it to the corner. The shot clock had already expired. Boilermakers coming out of blue a little bit. Well, right now, they need some leadership. Somebody is going to have to come out, settle that team down, particularly on the offensive end. Defensively, it's a question of keeping Ed Cota in check. He's created all sorts of havoc with his ability to penetrate. And as you say that, both Austin and Miller get up off the bench to come back in. Jai with an offensive rebound. Cota has the pass knocked away. Here comes Miller and his 20 points. Here comes Austin and his zero points. That's a shocker. Well, in some part, and in, in his defense, that mask seems to have been bothering him, getting whacked on the bridge of the nose earlier. You know, I'm sure he's got a painful situation there, but Carolina's done an excellent job of shadowing him. Chad Austin has had very few open shots on the perimeter. Coda out for Carolina. And the Tar Heels take their first lead of the game. Jameson. Vince Carter with his first points of the night gives Carolina its first lead. 2-3 zone now. Carolina's gotten the lead. And they're going to look again to play the perimeter, force Purdue to beat him from outside. And Cardinal goes to tie it again. Two outstanding teams. Carolina ranked number three into Purdue, number five. Both are unbeaten at 5-0. and oh. Maktar Jai feeling it offensively. Traveled before the shot. But when you can't get them to fall, the best way to get them is to get close as you can. And that's about as close as you can get. But Vince Carter, that should get him off a little bit, make him feel a little more confident in offense. First two points of the night. Cardinal again finding the seam in that 2-3 zone. So valuable to have a big guy who's able to catch and turn and shoot like that against the zone. Brian Cardinal quietly with 16. He and Miller have combined for 36 points. Now Eldridge holds Okalaja. Number 13, Alan Eldridge, picks up his first personal foul, Purdue's 13th foul. Vince Carter finally getting going on the putback, coming in averaging nearly 17 a game, and higher than that in the first two games here of this tournament. He's been on fire, scoring at will until tonight. The important thing, though, with Vince Carter is that instead of going out forcing things, he's playing within the Carolina offensive system, helping guys get better, finding people as well. Jai, tough one that falls, tied again. Boy, I've been impressed more and more every day with Maktar Jai's ability to go to the basket, something that I've never seen him do in the years, a couple of years that I've seen him play. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Trying to get Austin free. Austin's free. And he finally has his first two points of the night. Miller couldn't keep it inbounds. He made a great play to get there, but he couldn't fire it back in before he left. Like a wide receiver trying to keep his feet inbounds. Couldn't keep the handle and keep his feet at the same time. Same thing with Chad Austin. We talked about getting in close with Vince Carter. Chad Austin finding that the little 10-footer might be the one that gets him off as well. He's had to work for everything tonight. Purdue by two. Final possession of the quarter to Carolina. Jamison back into the game for Jai. 
Dakota. Tough one. Cardinal and Miller underneath, and Jamison picked up the foul. That'll be number three on Antoine Jamison. Tough play for Jamison, particularly when you know it's the last shot. You're trying to get the offensive rebound, but it's the end of the third quarter. Recognizing that you have two fouls, he might have been better off just letting this one go. Purdue goes for the home run. Eldridge, they've got plenty of time and an open man. Austin underneath. What a play by the Boilermakers. They hit the home run at the buzzer. Chad Austin with four points right at the end of this third quarter. And Purdue heads to the fourth quarter, leading by four on Carolina. Give a lot of credit, too, to Eldridge for sensing the clock and finding the open man. Chad Austin's involved, and Purdue leads Carolina by four with ten minutes to play. We've got a great one here for the championship in Alaska. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. And by the Canon Optura digital camcorder, leader of the new world. It is a great treat for all of us to be here in Alaska for the shootout, in part because of how much Anchorage and all of Alaska embraces this tournament. They love getting schools the caliber of Purdue and Carolina up here, and they're getting their money's worth tonight. Well, absolutely. This is a big game. This is a close game, and in every big close game, there's always a turning point where one team takes off on a great play. This might be it. Eldridge, presence of mind as he's fallen out of bounds to find Chad Austin. Austin pumped up after a scoreless 28 minutes of this game. He's got four points at the end of the third quarter. Brad Miller with 20 points. Chad Austin just now getting going. Carolina got a Vince Carter involved. He got a put back for his first two. Jamison's been the big story offensively for the Tar Heels. No real foul trouble. Jai and Jamison have three for Carolina. Nobody close to that for Purdue. on Shamad Williams. Carolina just out of sync for much of this game offensively, although in the third quarter they did pick it up a lot. Now the foul is going to go on Austin. Well, the reason for Carolina being out of sync Purdue has to be that sticky Purdue, Purdue defense. Purdue. They've taken away a lot of the things Carolina likes to do, including the alley-oop, and it's forced them to go to their guards for an awful lot of offense, which Coda and Shamad Williams have delivered. You know, whenever you talk about the top programs, the top players, the top coaches, somehow Purdue always gets left off that list. You hear about Carter and Jamison and Carolina, but Gene Cady does a tremendous job. Okalaja missing, Miller another rebound. He's got the best team in the Big Ten. He's got a top five team in the country. He's got a club that can beat anybody. Well, we talked about this at the beginning of the shootout. Purdue doesn't stick out as one of those gaudy teams with superlative players, but they play together well and they play hard. Eldridge drops it in. There's no question coming up here. The two schools that generated the most interest locally were North Carolina and UCLA, but it's clear that Purdue's as good as anybody here. Absolutely, and it's the formula for success, that hard work, that good defense and teamwork. Kalanja passed up the three, now finds Coda. Coda inside again. He does that so well. If you let Ed Coda get in the paint, he's got an awful lot of options. Austin, three-pointer. Long rebound. Mayfield's there for the Boilermakers. It's a good chance for them to get it back outside and reset. Got to get their big people back involved, Purdue. That's the momentum breaker. Okalaja caught between Austin and Miller. Does he get out on Austin or does he help out doubling on Miller? Meanwhile, Alan Eldridge is having the game of his life. He's got 16 points. Still Carolina, Shamada Williams and Ed Cota coming together. Well, Alan Eldridge is a guy that you don't expect an awful lot of offense out of, only averaging six and a half points, but he's found opportunities and he's stepped up, especially in the breach where Chad Austin hasn't been able to get off. And for Eldridge, the 16 tonight to represent a new career high. 
And with Austin having only four, they've needed every one of them from Eldridge. He's gone to the bench. Mike Robinson back in. McQuay in for Cardinal as well. Jamison inside. Triple teamed and scores. Well, that time Brad Miller was out contesting Maktar Jai's pass way out on the floor. You know, I think he might be better served stepping back in the middle and helping out on Antoine Jamison. One on one with Jamison, you're going to lose. Miller squares up. Now off to McQuay. Plenty of time to shoot. Purdue by four. So many touches for Miller every time down the floor. He's their best passer. He certainly has the ability to shoot outside. Missed it. Got it back. Up again. Got it. And he's fouled. Brad Miller having the game in his life as well. well. Dan, yesterday we talked about Brad Miller not finishing strongly against UMass. But today, I think he got the message. Second chance opportunity, going up strong, using his wide, broad shoulders very well. Another look at it here. He misses, but continues to go after it. Again, blocks Jai off with that shoulder. Jai, his fourth. Miller with 22. And nine rebounds and six assists. And there's big sister Renee, the former player here at Alaska Anchorage who still lives here in Anchorage, and she's having as much fun as anybody in the building. Little Brothers got 23. John to the bench with his fourth. Miller gets a rest. Purdue by seven. Cardinal back in for the Boilermakers. Brendan Haywood back in for the Tar Heels. North Carolina searching for answers to this Purdue pressure. Really been Coda and Jamison, the only two who've been able to do much. Jamison again, he's unstoppable right now. 22. And again, perimeter play, putting it on the floor, dribbling to his spot. Something you didn't see from Jamison in his first two years here at Carolina. The call's going to go against Shamad Williams, and it's the only surprise is that it took us until the fourth quarter to see Brian Cardinal laid out on the floor. Well, he picks his spots, but Brian Cardinal's as good as anyone in drawing the official's attention to the contact. Take a look here on the pick. <laughs> and see, it's a dead giveaway when that hit snaps back before a guy falls. And, you know, I'm really surprised, but hey, like I said before, he does what it takes. Missed by Purdue. Coda, nice push ahead to Shamond Williams. It may be November, but we've got two teams who are pretty enthused and pretty intense about this game tonight. Well, these two teams, as good as they are, they have as much pride as anybody in this country. And like you said, this is November, but this is for bragging rights as much as anything else. Mike Robinson coming off the screen, missed the 15-footer. Carolina wants to push it again. Coda's up there waiting for it. You see Brad Miller running back to the scorer's table, ready to come in. They can't afford to have him on the bench too long. Haywood inside. No. Loose ball, Purdue. Tough break for the freshman, although that's one of those you gather yourself and you rip the rim down. Nobody on Purdue would be able to hold him down at 7 foot 265. Inside six minutes to play. Holding Haywood down would be like trying to hold down those Thanksgiving balloons on a windy day. <laughs> He's a huge guy. And just 18 years of age, just two days ago. Five to shoot it. Long three, no. Tipped away, and Shimon Williams has another freebie, and it's a one-point game. And not just buckets for Carolina but buckets that get the team and the fans up on their feet. Back-to-back -back jams by Williams. Yeah, Shimon could have just as easily laid it up, but he wanted to add some emphasis. Fans on their feet as Purdue takes a timeout. Their lead is down to one, Shimon to Williams. With a couple of jams has brought the Tar Heels back within one point. 
There's the momentum. There's the run by Carolina. Gene Cady couldn't get Brandon Miller into the game quickly enough. Shaman Williams has brought the Tar Heels almost all the way back. Carolina back within one of Vince Carter not scoring, but helping out the Carolina cause in other ways. Absolutely. Games like this come down to that extra effort. And you watch Vince Carter diving on the floor, kicking the ball or pushing the ball out front to Shimon Williams. You know, without that effort, without putting his body on the line, Shimon Williams doesn't get that layup, and Purdue probably has possession. Back-to-back -back dunks for Williams. Carolina within one. Brad Miller back into the game for Purdue. We have 5.09 to play in the fourth quarter. Carolina got out of the gate very slowly. They had scored just two points five minutes into the game. Low scoring first half, much quicker pace in the second half. Carolina has never led in this game. Williams wants to work on Jamison inside. They'll reverse it. Cornell. Carolina's ball. Good work by Shimon Williams at the defensive end. Excellent hustle by Williams. Purdue, though, getting a little careless with the ball. They've got to start running stuff that goes to their strength, and that's Brad Miller. Now a turnover by Carolina. Coda just led Williams a little bit too far. Much better shooting in the second half. Both teams, last time down the floor for each, though, costly turnovers. Miller spinning, missing, rebound Okolaja in traffic, gets away, and Okolaja has been hurt again. Remember, he had his nose bloody to the first half. See Miller with the spin inside. Okolaja grabbing the rebound. And Brian Cardinal just doesn't know when to quit. Okolaja winding up with a, a headache number one. <laughs> Been a tough night for him. I wouldn't think Brian Cardinal is the most popular guy among opponents at the end of the night. But they know he's there. Mm -hmm. They won't forget him. Carter, tough one. Carolina leads. First time tonight. Inside for Cardinal. Okolaja on his back. And remember, words exchanged in the first half after the Cardinal elbow sent Okolaja to the bench. Take a look here. Vince Carter, we said he wasn't really clicking offensively. Tough shot. But if anybody's going to make that, it's Vince Carter, the best athlete on the floor for Carolina. On the other end, the Okolaja revenge. <laughs> Brian Cardinal with a nice fake gets Okolaja off his feet. And I got a feeling that Cardinal would have hit the deck if even if he was just barely touched <laughs> and still drawn the foul. Cardinal to the line, getting better and better. Did not score at all against UAB. One thing that Purdue did extremely well against UMass, really the reason they were able to win the game, is shoot free throws. They were 30 for 34 as a team against the Minutemen in the semifinal. And that's going to be something Purdue is going to have to do throughout the season. They've got two blue collar workers inside with good up fakes, guys who are physical, and they're going to draw an awful lot of fouls. It's going to be a prime pump for some of their offense. Mayfield back in for Cornell. Three good ball handlers on the floor for the Boilermakers, and the two free throws by Cardinal give Purdue a one point lead. Little token man-to-man -man pressure by Purdue that time just to keep Carolina thinking. It's Chad Austin being entrusted with the job of covering Carter. Here's Carter outside. Miller guarding Jamison. Coda slashing to the bucket. Well, hey, Coda. But Tony Mayfield, it's like Mayfield's not even there. Cardinal will take it. Rebound Austin. His offensive rebounds have been key for Purdue tonight. Austin for the lead. 
Rebound Carter. Nobody underneath the basket that time. I've seen Chad Austin play a lot in the last year or so, and one thing I've noticed, his jump shot is flat. He usually has a nice arcing jumper from out there. He's just rushing it a little bit and probably not getting the rotation of the arc that he'd like. And again, maybe that nose is bothering him. Broke it last week and took a shot when he took a charge earlier in this game. Carter hopping after he took the shot. Wanted that one badly, but now Purdue has a chance to reclaim the lead. What a great game we have had here tonight between Carolina and Purdue. Brad Miller one more time. 25 for Miller. Antoine Jameson hesitant to come out on Miller, knowing Miller can put it on the floor and possibly draw him into a foul situation. Look at the fight inside. Miller fighting to get in front. NBA distance three-pointer, Shaman Williams. He's got 18 all of a sudden. Purdue is definitely going to need Chad Austin to light up. His big guys are starting to get tired. And a foul called on Okolaja, who thought he'd gotten it clean and also thought Miller had traveled on the spin. You can see down low with the picks across and the exchanges as we see Brad Miller ultimately set up and go inside. But both Miller and Cardinal are pretty much winded. You can see Cardinal grabbing on his shorts right now. You know, it's taken a lot out of them to try to play the big men for Carolina. And down the stretch, you're definitely going to need Chad Austin's offense because these two guys might be spent. There is a full timeout coming at the next stoppage. As Miller hits the first, he's a good free throw shooter. If he makes this one, he'll tie the game and give himself a rest for a minute. Well, if he knows that, it might give him some incentive, <laughs> as if he needed some. What a night he is having. Got them both. He's got 27. Career high is 31. Gene Cady Sr. is keeping him in. Who's going to win the title? Carolina for the third time or Purdue for the second? Dodge Avenger has pretty much turned the notion that sports check Chad Austin has been held in check these guys are carrying him well they're certainly doing what they're supposed to do they're the focal points of both teams Gene Katie talked about expecting a double double from Brad Miller every night you know it's quite an accomplishment to get one of those against a team of the caliber of North Carolina and Antoine Jameson what can you say big basket after big basket and he's done it pretty much without the help of his running buddy Vince Carter just a minute 40 to play in the last three minutes there have been two ties and five lead changes in this game and it's tied right now Carolina looking to explore the defense see what it gives them Williams wants the three and he buries another one Back to back threes by Shimon Williams. Let me take that back. It's not see what they give him, <laughs> see what they can take. And Shimon Williams has pretty much been taking, seizing the opportunity. He is on fire in the second half. And now Williams draws a foul down at the other end. At that time the foul was called on Brian Cardinal for a block on the baseline, trying to free up the jump shooter. You take a look here. He's got the room, almost too much room. Jerron Cornell giving up much too much room to Shimon Williams. 42% shooter from three-pointer range in his career, and there's Cardinal sliding and giving a little hip check to Shimon. 30-second timeout has been called. Williams with 21, 9 for 18 from the floor. He's got three of Carolina's four three-point field goals and a three-point lead now for UNC. Big possession right now, obviously for Carolina being up three, they can push out the lead. But more importantly for Purdue, they've got to make a stop right here. One, obviously, to get possession, but certainly to kill any momentum that Carolina might have. You can expect Carolina possibly to run their passing game, something that creates a lot of confusion with opposing teams, winds up in some mismatches, and then ultimately Carolina can exploit those mismatches and their quickness underneath. Just one change, and those on the floor, Mayfield in for Purdue in place of Cornell. They're going to try to pressure the inbounds. You talk about passing game, you look for Carolina to do a lot of picking away, a lot of picking down. They don't seem to spread the floor right now. 
with Shimon Williams. Maybe take a little time off the clock. They've got two great ball handlers in Williams and Coda. Both do and can play point guard. 20 to shoot, 50 in the game. You know, this could be a momentum breaker, too, for Carolina. You start slowing down, guys start standing around. Coda going to do it himself. Six to shoot. Okalaja had it knocked away, got it back. And the shot clock will expire. That's exactly what I mean. When you start taking time off the clock after you've gained momentum, when you try to spread the floor and, and the, to milk that clock, you get guys standing around. Carolina was not going to get a good shot. Excellent defense by Purdue. Shot clock turned off. Purdue with the ball down by three. Miller baseline around Jameson. He's got two more. It's a one-point game with 16 seconds to play, and the Boilermakers take a 30-second timeout. Brad Miller now with 29. You know Purdue's going to go after the inbounds pass. Take a look here. They went right to their source. Brad Miller who's had just one heck of a day. Antoine Jameson not wanting to draw the foul. Pretty much conceded Miller's move to the basket to give up two. What a game it has been between Purdue and North Carolina. Purdue leading by as many as 11 early, now down by one. Boilermakers have 130 remaining, Carolina two. Both teams under the limit right now. Carolina gets it in into the hands of Carter. And a foul coming. Shavad Williams is hit. He almost got that ball away before the foul, down to 10 seconds. Six seconds came off the clock. And remember, that's just the sixth foul on Purdue. They've got to do it one more time to send the Tar Heels to the line. Precious seconds ticking away. Jamison and Eldridge wraps him up, and an intentional is called. Oh, what a call at this point of the game as Eldridge went to wrap up Jamison. See, here's where I think the officials have to be in the game. You know what's trying to happen. You know, the right, the left arm, as you saw, was reaching around trying to get the ball. The right arm was trying to do it as well as you see Jamison miss the front end. Officials have to anticipate with a game like this and understand what's going on. There's no reason to call that intentional. You know the intent was to try to go after the ball and stop the clock. That's just a question of form over substance, and that's wrong. One of two for Jamison, a two-point game, and now Purdue will have to foul again. Okalaja is going to run a couple of seconds off the clock. Now Eldridge fouls Williams down to seven seconds, and if Shimon can hit both, it's a two-possession game. Now, what was the difference between that foul, knowing that you're going after, didn't even go for the ball, just grabbed the shirt, as opposed to the last one? You take a look here, the same thing. You reach out, he grabbed his arm. Pretty much the same play on that end, but the officials were attuned to the fact that this is what's necessary for Purdue to stop the clock. You don't want to make too much out of an official's call, but it's tough when it takes away an opportunity. Shaman Williams hits the first. Four-point lead. Shaman Williams has been huge in the second half. Now up to 23 points on the night. Some big three-pointers, two big free throws there. It's a four-point lead, and how pivotal that intentional foul call turns out to be. Well, it's just a shame that a game is decided on a situation like that. Most folks here, I'm sure everybody at home, would have liked to see this thing settled in play as opposed to on a call like that. And as I mentioned before, there was no difference between the, 
the succeeding foul and the one that occurred. And you can't rewind the clock now, but theoretically, Purdue could have the ball down by two instead of down by four. And, and that's what I mean. It's decided by play as opposed to a particular call. A reminder that Sports Center comes up next immediately following this game. They're down four with just seven seconds to play. Miller's going to throw the baseball pass. And Cornell did a great job to keep it in, but into the hands of Carter. And North Carolina's going to remain perfect in Alaska, winning the Great Alaska Shootout for the third time in three trips. Antoine Jameson and Shimon Williams with huge nights as Bill Guthridge defeats Gene Cady in a terrific basketball game here tonight. Absolutely great defensive play by both teams. They went to their strengths. They were able to capitalize. You know, they lost their services pretty much offensively of Vince Carter, Carolina did. Purdue without Chad Austin, but people stepped up. But certainly guys like Antoine Jameson proved why he's a player of the year candidate. And Antoine Jameson has just been named the most outstanding player of the Great Alaska Shootout. What a great night he had. He had 20 or more points land in all three games. Well, I think on the other side, Purdue, they're going to go back, look at this film, and say, hey, we're a lot further along than Gene Cady thought we were. You got to give them an awful lot of credit. Again, they hung in there. Carolina 73, Purdue 69. Carolina never led in this game until the fourth quarter. They trailed by as many as 11, but what a trip up here to Alaska as the Tar Heels beat UCLA, Seton Hall, and Purdue in succession to win the 20th annual Great Alaska Shootout Championship. Final score, Carolina 73, Purdue 69. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Carolina wins. Sports Center is next.